What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great uh, Thirsty Thursday. The Giants, well, um, you might not want to eat a, uh, an Italian sub because you'll probably throw it up. You know, the Giants are getting ready to play uh, against New England Patriots. Daniel Jones will play some to start out the game, and we'll see how Danny Dimes, Danny Dollar Store, <laughs> Danny, brother, can you spare a dime, uh, how well he does, and so on. We sit here right now, 28 days, 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 20 seconds away from kickoff of the 2020 season. couple of things. Tom Brady, this might be, here's the thing that's kind of interesting. Now, I know Tom Brady is all world, that Tom Brady is the goat and everything else. But at some point, 45, 45 years old, Tom Brady will be missing in action for the next 10 days until after their uh, game against the Titans on the 20th. And I dare say this is kind of interesting from the standpoint of they've had so many different losses. They lost their center um, for the season. You think about receivers that he had last year. Antonio Brown is gone. You think of the Gronkster has retired. Chris Godwin is still recovering. Um, they had another receiver yesterday, free agent that they signed. He was hurt. No word on how uh, hurt he was. I, I don't have that information at this moment. Um, the center, I think he went out with, with leg cramps, the, the backup center that's now the starter. So you start thinking about all of these weapons, and, and Leonard Fournette, I don't know if he's lost the extra 30 pounds or not that he had. You start looking at this, and now Tom Brady is missing for the next 10 days for personal reasons. We might be playing them at the right time. I, I'm just saying, you know, we might be lucky in playing them the opening of the season because, you know, he's going to miss 10 days of practice and um, preseason games and stuff. And you start thinking about, you know, how cohesive will that offense be to come out the gate? Now, I know Tom Brady is a difference maker, but I know one thing. He's only 11 years younger than me. And some of that stuff has to start hitting in and, and start making a difference. This would be, I, I might say, the best chance that the Cowboys have of beating Tom Brady for one the Cowboys will be able to put a lot more pressure in his face. We saw today Micah Parsons should have had several sacks. <laughs> you know, they, they just stopped counting. He would have had a, a fistful of, of sacks uh, today easily. And, you know, having him coming from the outside and having, um, I know they're unproven just as yet, but I believe that we're going to have a better offensive front than we've had in many, many years. And I think that this defense could be really good. My biggest worry right now is the offensive line, and I'm trying to understand what we're doing with Tyler Smith. You know, we heard a couple of days ago that um, Joe Feeben, who throughout most of his career, he's been a, an offensive line coach or an offensive coordinator. He was a head coach in Miami for a while. <sighs> I, you know, I, I remember Marco Colombo, and I remember the impact Marco Colombo made on the offense after Paul Alexander screwed it up. And I, I'm just not feeling with the offensive line. I'm trying to understand, one, how the Cowboys um, go into this without really having a swing tackle, and second, how it is Tyler Smith is behind Connor McGovern. If you believe Connor McGovern was the better player, then why do we end up spending that? pick on a guard and you you know the thing that you need from your first round pick is instant impact so i'm sitting here looking at josh ball josh ball i hope there's a quick hook for him because he's looking like the swing tackle either we need to make um tyler smith the swing tackle and start training him to be the Tyron Smith replacement so that way when Tyron Smith gets hurt, he can step in and say, we're just going to roll the dice with Connor McGovern. And I don't know what you do with Connor. Well, I guess you, you try and coach up Josh Ball. But we need to do that, or we need to coach up Tyler Smith as much as possible to be the starting guard. 
the offensive line did not look very cohesive. Now, again, Tyrone Smith didn't play a whole lot in practice today, which is a game changer. But if this is a foreshadowing of what we're going to have during the season without Tyron Smith, then you need to be a little worried about the situation because I'm sitting here looking at this, and I don't think that Josh Ball is going to be ready. You know, on the depth chart, you have Matt Lewinsko, but Matt hasn't been able to work out in, in since before I was at training camp and may end up having surgery and is a Division One AA guy. I'm not sure that he's going to be ready to step in to be a Tyron Smith replacement. And this is where the Cowboys, you know, they're penny wise and pound foolish. They find great draft picks, you know, and, and, and things and stuff, but it's not quite enough. I mean, if you just go through the Cowboys' last draft picks in the first round over the last 10 years versus the Eagles, you say, damn, we are just blowing them away, which is part of the reason why the Eagles are always signing so many free agents and making trades for other players because they're trying to get some of the talent like the Cowboys have gotten. But the Cowboys always have just a singular plan. They don't plan for a rainy day. And by definition, the NFL is nothing but rainy days. So the offensive line, like I said, after hearing that Joe Feeban and the assistant offensive line coach weren't really on board or excited about the Cowboys drafting Tyler Smith, um, that kind of blows me away because, generally speaking, position coaches are happy as crap that you ended up wasting or spending draft capital especially a first round pick on guys for your area and i don't understand why he is excuse me i don't know where i got this cold i took a covid test i don't have covid but it was just like i could literally feel my throat getting sore and and just like all of a sudden boom it just hit me i don't know where it came from but i definitely feel it and and in my nose and in my throat. Like I said, I did take a COVID test. No COVID, no fever. Just anyway. Anyway, I don't understand what they are doing or what the plan is with Tyler Smith. I don't know if they're trying to say you've got to earn your spot to get out on the field and they're looking for him to make a move and really just take the spot from Connor Williams. If this is some mind games, you know, some Jedi mind tricks from Joe Feeban. But you don't want to ruin a guy. We don't want to have this be something that lingers. You need to make this guy feel good and get him motivated about playing and being behind Josh Ball and Connor McGovern, I just don't think that that's going to be the way that it's going to work well for us. So I don't know. I I definitely want to know more about that situation and things. And um, we've got a few more weeks here. We've got, like I said, 28 more days until uh, the Thursday night season openers and then three more days after that. So 31 days, one month from today for the Cowboys to play their first game against Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. And we need to make sure that offensive line is not shaky. Um, You know, we want to run the football, and we're going to need to be able to have those guys playing downhill. So, yeah, I've got real questions now on the offensive line. Feel better about the defensive line. Feel better about the linebackers. Feel better about the wide receiver. Uh, I guess – I guess you could say I feel better about the kicking game. I didn't say I feel great about it. I just said I feel better than what I literally saw because what I saw in training camp made me throw up my Italian sub, my steak and cheese sub, uh, my Joe Boo wings, um, the, the rum that I drank. I mean, it, I'm just like, it's like a cleanse. What I saw was like a cleanse. It made me so throw up All right, good people, I'm going to watch the New York Stinking Giants, at least for a little bit, and I'm sure it's going to pass me the heck out. And um, I'll be checking on you guys a little bit later. You know how we roll. I will see you soon.